Hey. What happens when black people are allowed to thrive? Black Panther was an experience, and as you may be able to tell, I was all about it. Not only was it a fun superhero movie, it was also a social commentary, it was also a demonstration of the power of black women, it was also black excellence and opulence on display, the riches abound. And it also makes a statement about why that black utopia is out of reach, and what the pitfall, what the perilous flaw in the black community is really about. Hey, it's your girl Asante, helping you move consciously and creatively through life, so let's go. Let me start off this review by saying that I am not a superhero aficionado. I didn't know what MCU stood for, I had to Google it. And I actually don't know that much about the superhero universes. But y'all know I am too black and proud to not take my butt to the theater, okay? Putting my money where my mouth is. I have a few points that I want to make about the movie, but first, I just want to bask in what I thought was glorious about it. And don't worry, this first part of the review is spoiler free, I will let you know when the spoilers are coming, not yet. The movie was chock full of those classic conflicts of moral duty versus legal duty, war versus peace, revenge versus reconciliation, all that good stuff. I also love that this was a story for us, by us, about us. Black ensemble, black lead, black villain, black director, black writer, black, 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 black. And of course, from a representation standpoint, it's phenomenal to see a cast of strong black characters, not dependent on white people, not subjected by white people. So often when movies star black people, it's about how poor and tragic their lives are. Oh, how sad. But this is not a black sorrow movie, not a movie about being however many years a slave, not a movie where nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nah, we get some black joy, black love, black power in this movie. Hello. The acting was amazing. The sets, lit. The costume designs, gorgeous. I mean, just the layering, the adornment, the attention to detail. I see you production designer Hannah Beachler and costume designer Ruth Carter. Let's go, what's good? I also have to shout out to Shuri and the advances that occur when black women thrive. Shuri is the Black Panther's sister and princess of Wakanda. And I love that she is the technological genius not just behind the Black Panther, but behind all of Wakanda. Like, yes, I designed this entire transportation system. Yes, I designed this virtual driving system. Yes, I know you think these beads are fine, but I'm actually gonna work to improve them because just because something works well now doesn't mean it can't work better. Yes, black excellence. I love the theme that sometimes it's better to be underestimated. Like I'll just be over here putting in my work and receiving my blessings. Y'all don't have to mind. I I'm not gonna brag about it. I'm just gonna be over here, you know, killing the game, minding my own self, you know. that That is how I roll a lot of the time, just head down and hustle. I love the nod to stolen African artifacts that hang in British and American museums. Yup, I did a unit on that in my art history days. I was like, accurate. I will also say there are some valid criticisms to the film. One is the lack of humor. And and I agree that while there were a couple of funny moments, especially towards the beginning, the movie by and large does take on a serious tone. Another thing that some people are saying is that the Black Panther himself isn't that interesting of a character as far as his motivations and his development, which is debatable and you have to ask how his compares with other characters' backstories. But I think that any simplicity in Black Panther's character just leaves room for a more complex statement that's being made overall. It leaves room to reflect on the world of Wakanda and its flaws, which I'll get to in a bit, and it leaves room for for the women to shine, which I'm not mad about. But I do think that the main draw of this film is the representation. Having strong black lead characters, having a majority black ensemble, having black strong women, having a celebration of African inspired culture, giving people a sense of pride. I think all of these things are incredibly valuable in and of themselves. So I loved it overall, but let's really dig into it. There's a lot to get into with this movie. So yes, I'm gonna be doing some analysis. There will be spoilers ahead. I will be reading into things. You have been forewarned. If you don't want spoilers, stop here and go to this part of the video. Do, 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 do. Okay, we good? All right, there are two overarching things that I wanna to touch on as lessons from this film, and the first is the role of emotions and empathy and leadership. By Wakanda's rules, the only thing that someone has to do to become Black Panther is win a fight. There's no council of elders that has to take a vote. There are no other tests of mental agility or moral compass. There's nothing about needing to be raised in Wakanda even. It's just who's up to the challenge, can you win the fight? The problem comes when another character is a better fighter, 
but not a better king. The film points out the flaw in traditional thought, and here it's literally Wakandan tradition that prowess and might make you a better leader. Instead, the side that wins in the end values empathy and reverence and intelligence and consideration. In the end, the problem is not solved by the biggest dude or the toughest dude. And there are some big tough dudes in this movie. <laughs> wow. But T'Challa is someone who shows his emotion and his love for his family and for his country. And during that challenge, Killmonger tries to frame that emotion as weakness. But in the end, T'Challa comes out on top and his emotion doesn't make him any less strong, any less of a man, of a king, or of a Black Panther. He's connected to his emotions in a healthy way that help him get his priorities straight. And T'Challa, even in his victory, is merciful and offers to save Killmonger. Like, after this dude was trying to kill you, you're still reaching out like, wow, talk about being the bigger man. In T'Challa's challenge with White Gorilla, he pushes him to yield rather than just focusing on defeat. This is exemplary leadership in the film's eyes. Even when you talk about Black Panther's powers, they gear towards someone who is merciful and empathetic. The power of the Black Panther and the heart-shaped herb is to heal, which is something done out of love. His suit isn't made for attack, it's made for defense. The suit absorbs the kinetic energy that someone else is trying to use against him and uses that same force to repel the attacker. The powers are made for a man who's a protector, not an aggressor. The movie flips gender roles not only in showing a man who is very connected to his emotions, but also in showing strong, powerful warrior women. The king's bodyguard are all women, the person who's known as the fiercest warrior in the land is a woman, the people who do a lot of driving the plot forward are women, they're the ones with the strong moral compass who take up arms against Killmonger as he tries to take the throne. This is literally some kick-ass representation. And there's this great moment in the all-out fight scene, which is pretty much boys versus girls, blue versus pink, like we kind of went back to kindergarten if kindergarten was a fight to the death. Oyoke, who leads the women warriors, is like, I have the strength, but I also have the sensitivity and your rhino will yield because he loves me. Let me get them licks, but I will kill you for my country. It's the best thing. And then my boy has to yield. He has to yield. And love conquers all. All you need is love. Bam, ba, na, na, na. The second overall lesson of the film is that without recognizing and reconciling our history, we will never be able to move forward. I thought one of the most striking parts of the film was when we've already seen T'Challa go back to his past before taking the throne. We saw his father as one of the Panther ancestors come down from his big family tree and they were in this vast African landscape. And then we see Killmonger go back to his past and he's back in the same apartment that we saw earlier. That's all he has. And the only person there is his dad. And I was like, oh, there's no mythical landscape for him? Where, what does Killmonger imagine that his past is like? What he has in his past is not vast and wide. It's this limited landscape with one ancestor. By the way, where is this boy's mama? And I see this as a metaphor for the heritage that Black Americans have access to, as opposed to the heritage that Black people from the continent can access. As a Black American descendant of slaves, I don't have a huge family tree. I have the bit of it that's in America. And that's all Killmonger knows. He's unable to go back and reconcile his history, so he's unable to move forward. Not only can can he not see any of his ancestors, but he can't reconcile the trauma of his father's death. He's unable to forgive the sins of his ancestors and therefore he can't go on. He is stuck in that moment, in that attitude of vengeance. And you could make the connection between Black Panther killing his brother in America and abandoning his American nephew, and powerful Africans during the transatlantic slave trade selling their brothers into slavery and leaving them fatherless to fend for themselves in America. You, you could make that connection. And Killmonger represents a lot of that unresolved resentment and trauma to taken to the extreme. But for Americans, it makes the point that until we fully acknowledge and condemn and reconcile the sins of slavery and segregation and ghettoization and all of its repercussions in our history, which some people still can't even acknowledge and condemn today, until we reconcile that, we won't be able to move forward. I think that it speaks volumes that the movie starts in the ghetto. The first shot is that makeshift basketball hoop. This is where the conflict stems from. And the film ends with the ghetto, with T'Challa bringing technology, and innovation and building the area back up. That is the ending solution. T'Challa is also unable to move forward without going back. Not only in the tradition of having someone go back before they ascend to the throne, but also before T'Challa is revived and given that second chance, he goes back to his mythical family tree and confronts his father about his sin. T'Challa has to go back and reconcile this problem that his father has caused before he's able to move forward, defeat Killmonger, and rule his country. I also think it's interesting in this movie that we are our own villains. Which, on the one hand, will happen if you're making a black ensemble movie, the villains will also be black. 
But on the other hand, it kind of makes a point. Yes, you will have the white folks like Claw who are trying to come in and rob us of our resources. Yes, you will have the white folks like Mr. CIA who come in thinking they know so much and need to be schooled. I made this plain American standard for you, sweetie. I'll just walk you through this. But we also have this inner turmoil. And more specifically, we are fighting against the legacy of colonization and slavery and generational trauma that we have been subjected to, that Killmonger represents. And the pitfall of the black utopia of Wakanda was in its prior failure to reconcile that issue of the past. There have always been real life disagreements about how to address those issues within the black community. Do we go out and fight fire with fire, take an eye for an eye? Or do we practice nonviolence and try to go about things more diplomatically? Do we go with the mentality that everyone has to pick themselves up by their bootstraps and work with what they've got? Or should we always be pushing for more, more opportunities and more access? And do the talented 10th have a responsibility to move the entire race forward? And welcome back for my non-spoiler crew, you are in the right place. But that's a lot of what Wakanda is struggling with. Should black excellence be responsible for lifting up black people worldwide? Should we handle black progress through violence or through laws and agreements? And Wakanda's also struggling with what a lot of developed nations struggle with, isolation versus intervention. What right does Wakanda have to meddle in the affairs of other countries, especially as people whose brethren are so affected by colonization and the meddling of predominantly white countries? That, along with looking back in order to move forward and the role of empathy and emotion and leadership, were some of the big themes that I took away from the movie. Other than the fact that black people are amazing, powerful, regal, and brilliant. If you're new here and you're interested in social awareness, culture, and personal development, then you should subscribe to get new videos from me every week. And and if you're into real life Black Panthers and Black activists, then you should check out my last video on Lorraine Hansberry, who's probably more of an activist than you realized. I mean, you want to talk about powerful representation for Black folks, you gotta talk about her. Big thanks to my Patreon patrons for supporting this channel and making these videos possible. In the comments, let me know what you thought of the Black Panther movie because I know you went to see it. Oh, I know you're not just gonna skip out on Black Panther like that. Even if you haven't seen it, I hope you enjoyed this review and seriously, go see it. As always, remember to live spiritedly and think creatively and I will We'll see you next time. What's making me happy this week is the fact that Black Panther is shattering all of these box office records, yes! It's important that this movie does well because then they'll make more movies like it and it'll show that a Black ensemble cast can really succeed. So, you know, at this rate there'll be a Black Panther 8, which I'm excited about. And also making me happy this week was the fact that I got a nice long three-day weekend for President's Day, so that was nice. Well, I'm gonna go keep rooting for everybody Black. I'll be right back! To find a job is like a haystack needle Cause where he lives, they don't use colored people Living just enough, just enough for the city